Hello friends, today we're talking about the one, two, threes of clutter check. Clutter check is when you go around your house and look for things that are out of place. It's really not clutter yet, but it could become clutter if you allow it to continue to collect and simmer and <laughs> turn into clutter. Clutter has things in it that need to be thrown away, things that need to be given away, and things that need to be put away. When you are doing a clutter check, you're really just looking for things that need to be put away that are in the areas that you've already claimed for yourself. So you remember when we talked about decluttering, you wanna declutter for 15 minutes in the zone or the area of your house that needs work for the week, okay? So for example, this week is, is um, zone two. Zone two is the kitchen. So to declutter the kitchen, you would have gone through four different areas in that kitchen and spent 15 minutes in each of those areas getting rid of things you don't love, need, or use. Things that need to be given away or things that need to be thrown away and things that need to be put away. Maybe they're in the wrong areas in your kitchen or even don't even belong in the kitchen. So once that's been done, I want you to plant a flag and say, this is my country. This is my countertop, my shelf my drawer. There is nothing in it that doesn't belong in it. It is exactly the way I want it. And that's what you're going to clutter check. So this week, if you've decluttered four areas for 15 minutes, and remember, in general, a decluttering for 15 minutes will get you through about a banker's box worth of area in, in general terms. If it's paper, it's going to be a lot smaller. And if it's um, big things, I'll just say stuffed animals as an example, or pots. You know, you're going to be able to go through a much larger area in 15 minutes than you are a, a conglomeration of things. So, after you've done that, you're going to go and look in those areas three times a day. I know it sounds crazy, but listen, you're trying to bake, break some bad habits. So three times a day, you're going to look at the areas you've planted a flag in. You've claimed for yourself, you've already gone through it. So let's say this is your very first clutter check and last week you went through four areas and it was your kitchen, let's we'll stay with the kitchen. So today you're doing a clutter check. You're doing one at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Or if you're a payroll Patreon, a, a payroll uh, fly baby and you work outside the home, then you're going to be doing it before work, after work, and before bed. I know it sounds crazy, but it's going to keep your house from being reclaimed by clutter. A lot of times people will clean and declutter and turn around a, an hour later, a day later, a week later, and it's all the way it was before because you don't have any good habits yet. This is what's going to help you establish your habits. So let's say you did four areas in the kitchen. It's decluttering. I mean, it's a clutter check time. It's morning. You've had breakfast. You're going to look in your junk drawer. Oh, still looks good. You're going to look in your towel drawer. Oh, still looks good. You're going to look in your pots and pans or your dishes. Oh man, they still look good. And you're going to look under the kitchen sink. Wait a minute. What's this? Who put this in here? <laughs> you're going to take it out and you're going to say to the person who's the offender in a firm but kind way, remember that we're decluttering in here and I'm trying to get these places nice. We used to always throw this here, but it's not where it belongs. Remember that this belongs over there and you just go put it there, okay? Let's talk about something a little more general purpose. Let's talk about the living room. Let's say that you it's your third week and you now have 12 areas that you're checking every day until you know for sure you don't have to check those anymore because people aren't messing with it. So let's say they aren't putting anything in the junk drawer anymore. It's staying exactly what you want in there. You've got your scissors, you've got your tape, you've got your, who cares, whatever it is, uh, uh, notepads, you've got, rubber bands, whatever you want to keep in that junk drawer. It's exactly where you know it is. If somebody says, mom, where's the tape? You know where it is. Where are the scissors? They're in there. Where's a notepad right there? Where's some extra pins in that drawer? That's your, that's your quote junk drawer. And if nobody's throwing things in there anymore, then you can stop looking at that so often. Okay. But if they continue to look at your, your countertop, because your countertop is where everybody slings everything. And so you can find, uh, Coke cans and dog leashes and jackets on your countertop on a regular basis that don't belong there, then you're going to continue to clutter check that area until the family learns or you learn not to put those things there. This dog's leash goes on the hook by the door. This jacket 
could also go on a hook by the door or go in the closet or go in whatever, the, the laundry room um, area where you've got hooks. It doesn't matter. Wherever you decide it goes, that's where it goes. You keep repeating that to the people. They keep marching their little selves over there and putting them there so that they've learned this is where it goes. Uh-oh, mom's not going to want me to put this here. I'm going to hear about this. Not in a negative way, just in a positive way. Remember, no one's in trouble for bad habits. No one's in trouble for bad habits. You're not and they're not. You're going to firmly but kindly remind them that it's a bad habit and that's not where it goes. That you have a vision for your home and it's going to look like this. Okay. All right, so let's go back, like I was saying, to a more generalized area. Let's go to the living room. Let's say that uh, in the living room, you consistently have a problem with uh, the children putting the pillows on the floor, the throw pillows on the couch, on the floor, shoes in the middle of the room, um, toys all over the floor, um, you know, you name it, I'm just, laundry on the couch, whatever it is. And so let's look at it. The laundry on the couch, that's you. If you're in charge of doing your laundry, you remember that laundry is not complete until it's folded and put away. The easy part is washing it and drying it. It's the machine doing all the work. So when you do that and you just take it out of the dryer and dump it on the couch and say, I'll fold it later, you haven't done laundry. You've just created Mount Foldmore. So stop and fold those clothes and put them where they go. That's one, firm but kind with yourself. Uh, pillows on the floor. Sugar, come here. Put, pick those pillows up and put them back on mommy's couch. That's where they go. You can play with them on the floor, but you have to put them back when you're through. You see how that's firm but kind? Okay, but it's enough to be an annoyance. And one little annoyance times 20 is a cluttered room. Okay, so it goes back. And now toys on the floor. There's two things for toys on the floor. If you've got big kids, five or older, toys are on the floor, you have to say, that's not where your toys go, sweetheart. Go put them back in your toy box. But if you've got children four and under, especially two and under, they're toy dumpers. That's how they learn. They dump their toys. So you have to you have to pick them up four times a day, not three, four times a day. If you're living at home with little children, then four times a day, just pick their toys up and put them back in the toy box in that room if that's where you want them to play. And they're going to dump them right back out, but that's okay because they'll learn that the toys go in the toy box. Even though they're learning by dumping the toys out, they're also learning something by you putting them back in and especially having them help you. Little babies are so sweet because they want to help. So zero to four, that's what you're doing. Um, okay, so that's happening. And, and I know that sounds like a lot of work, but listen, isn't this something you wanna change? Do you want to live in a storage unit or do you want to live in a beautiful streamlined home where you have lots of time for enrichment, where you have time to sit on the floor and play with your baby and their toys? You won't have that until you get these habits established for yourself and your family. So one, two, threes of clutter check are morning, afternoon, and evening. Clutter check. Look at it all. Yes, you might have to go down into the basement and upstairs. You might have a lot of steps that are going on your Fitbit that day and every day because it's going to be a habit to check your house. You don't have to physically do the work, but you have to peruse the area and say, hmm, that doesn't belong there. Or, Oops, look what I left. Okay, all right, that's it today. That's the one, two, threes of clutter check. I know you can do it. Put your mind to it and always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful.